Hey guys, Nery here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with another Let's Play episode of Don Chorus Devon's Path. So, originally today I had the idea of doing a uh, an episode for Fueled by Insanity, but about three minutes into my video, it ended. So, I have to wait for the next update because I am not putting out a three to four minute video. No, I am giving you guys some quality content here on this channel. So, you thirsty boys and girls, let's get back into Daddy Devin, shall we? Wow, that does sound weird. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's jump right back into it. <clears throat> Garvin, here's your key. Oh, thank you, Professor. I mumble and take the key with the number 17 written on the tag, briskly returning to Miko. I'm one of the first students to get a key, which turned out to be a somewhat lengthy process. We were given a choice between single and double rooms, as there were less students than available beds, and the university had rented the whole guest house. I decided to get my own room. Miko had wanted to take a double room with me, and I had even considered it, but in the end, I like having a place I can retreat to, just by myself. And, well, I don't know if I'm ready to share a room with him yet, but I'd rather not start thinking about it all again now. Room number 17. I wonder if that's on one of the upper floors. Maybe with a bit of luck, we'll get a room close to yours. Although, with the size of this guest house, I don't think it really matters. Miko also opted to get a room on his own, mostly because he doesn't know anyone here well enough except me. Well, let's say he's not very good at meeting new people. Everyone who already got their key, please go to your rooms, unpack, and be in the cafeteria in 30 minutes. It's behind the door at the end of this corridor. I'll go drop my stuff off. I can't wait to get this backpack off me. That's <laughs> cute. Okay then, see you in a while. I walk down the single loaded corridor alone, counting the rooms. I count all the way up to 11 before I reach the end. It must be upstairs then. Even better for me, I'll have better views. Ah! Cutie. Turning around to get back to the staircase, I bump into a lion in a flannel shirt holding a coat in his paw. Lake, again. Oh, uh, sorry. I didn't mean to walk into you. He takes a step back, smiling timidly. <sighs> oh, one second, guys. It's okay. I should really be more careful. I didn't hear you at all. No, no, it's my fault. I didn't mean to sneak on you. The carpets here are really thick. This whole place is so nice. It looks pretty fancy, and there's so much wood in here. I chuckle. Although he seems timid at first, this line can be pretty intense. So much nicer than my home. I'm really excited to be here. I can't wait to see my room. I hope it's as fancy as the rest of this place. Yeah, really intense. We've just arrived here and he's already bursting with energy. Yeah, I like it here too. It's really cozy. If the corridors are so, if the corridors are so nice, imagine how cool the rooms have to be. I'm just trying to find mine. My stuff is pretty heavy, so I want to get all that off me finally. Look over at Lake, who only has a small backpack with him. Lucky. Or just smart. Oh, sure, yeah, that's a good idea. By the way, uh, which room is yours? I got room number 17. How about you? It would be nice to pay him a visit later. I'm sure he already has some fun ideas on how to spend a camp. On how to spend it in the camp. Number 12, and I have a feeling you'll end up there sooner or later. See you later, Carvin. Yeah, see you, like. <sighs> Why did I pack so much? Cursing myself in my head, I carry my unreasonably heavy bag in both paws. I need to learn to pack only the stuff I really need, and it better be sometime soon. This time, it's my turn to bump into someone. Oh, hello. In front of me, walking down the stairs, stands a bear. <sighs> From the downwards perspective, he looks outright imposing. I can't help but feel a bit intimidated by his presence. Ah, sorry! I wasn't paying attention to where I'm going. I'm... I packed a bit too much, and now I have to carry all this upstairs. Oh, uh, don't worry. Here, let me help you. The bear laughs loudly and takes my bag from me, carrying it upstairs with ease. He's big, although I can only speculate if it's more muscles or fat, and it looks like the bag is nothing to him. That's a very fortunate turn of events for me. I was sure those stairs would be the death of me. One second, guys, let me drink some water. My throat is really super dry. Oh, goodness. That's so good. Okay. Alrighty. Where to? 
Room number 17 should be right around here. We find my room easily. I unlock the door and swing it open. Okay, here you are. The bear drops my bag at the door and turns to leave. Hey, uh, thanks! No problem. Glad I could help. I'd gladly stay and talk some more, but I need to go fetch the rest of my stuff. Sorry. Picking up the bag, I turned into the room, and that's when it hits me. I didn't even introduce myself. Hey, wait! What's your name? The bear's already gone, though. Well, I'll catch him later. I sigh and enter the room, closing the door behind me. God, it's a beautiful room. Look! RTX on! <laughs> Neat is the first word that pops into my head when I look around it. The room isn't big, but it doesn't feel cramped either. If anything, I'm amazed at how well they've used the space. The walls here are also wooden, with one tasteful painting hanging above the bed for decoration. Cat think one of my cats are meowing. The bed, covered by a colorful patchwork, is big enough to fit at least two people comfortably. There's also a small wardrobe, a desk, and a chair. They're all minimalistic in style, fitting well with the room. A thick carpet covers the wooden floor. The colors remind me of a meadow, or a sunset sky. An ever-changing tapestry of vibrant colors and cloudy white. Oh, I'm going to love staying here. It feels like home, while simultaneously being better than any home I've ever had. I'll have plenty of time to look around, though. For now, I can just drop off my stuff and head back to the lobby. Maybe I'll check if Miko got his room yet. Or I could go pay Lake a brief visit. I wonder what happens... I'm gonna save it right here. I wonder what happens if you stay in the room. Stay in the room. Or I could just stay here and unpack. There's no hurry. Those two won't disappear anywhere. I pick up my bag and take out my instant camera. It's only for special occasions, but this certainly is one. Walking up to the window, I take a look outside. The guest house is surrounded by a forest, but from here I can see a few lakes and clearings between the trees. Actually, you know what? Let's, uh, let's, let's redo that. Let's go visit Miko. It's been a few minutes already, but if I go now, I can still catch Miko before he gets his key. Yeah, this mic. Give me an opportunity to talk to Devin. Taking only my camera bag with me, I leave the room and lock the door behind me. Oh! Miko! Walking around the corner, I see Miko at the end of the corridor. He waves to someone behind him before turning around and noticing me. Hey, Carvin. Got your key yet? Yeah, I got room number three. Should be right here. You need any help with that? I point at the huge bag Miko is dragging behind him. Being smaller than me, Miko often had to rely on me with carrying stuff. Used to that, I ask almost automatically. I won't turn that down. It's pretty heavy. I grab the bag and try to lift it. Oh damn, it's even heavier than it looks. Uh, by the way, who are you waving to? Oh, when I was waiting for the key, I was approached by a, by a tanuki that studies in the same department as me. We hadn't talked before, but he remembered me, so he came up to say hello and we talked for a bit. He was wrong about Miko being bad at making friends. Not even an hour has passed and he already met someone. Maybe I shouldn't assume that he's the same little wolf I knew three years ago. It's a lot of time to change. Hell, I feel like I'm a different person every two or three years. We haven't talked almost at all but about the time we were separate. We have so much catching up to do. Carvin? Uh, yes? We're here. I got so lost in thoughts, I didn't even notice Miko had stopped. Oh, right. Uh, do you want to come in for a moment? Sure, yeah. I can stay for long. I can't stay for long, though. I haven't unpacked my anything yet. Just dropped off my stuff. Very plain-looking room. Hmm. No, he needs a lot of, uh... He needs a lot of extra room for that equipment. Miko walks in through the door and I follow him, lifting the bag to avoid bumping at the doorstep. His room looks similar to mine, which is no surprise. What surprises me, though, is that he has two single beds instead of one like in mine. You asked for a double room? Hmm. Oh, no. Coach Devin said that almost all the rooms here are double, so even if we ask for a single one, we still might get a one with, with two beds. I still have it all for myself, though. I see. That's neat. Where should I put the bag? One second, guys. 
No, just anywhere. I'll unpack it right away. What's inside, by the way? It wouldn't be heavier if you stuffed it with rocks, I think. Just some, just some instruments and effects, the stuff I thought I might need. I walk up to the window and draw open the curtains, looking outside. It's not snowing as much anymore at the moment, but it will probably pick up again soon. The view, even from the ground floor, is still spectacular. The guest house is surrounded by a forest, and in the distance, some hills hide beneath thick layers of fog. Soft white fluff is covering everything in sight. I look around, admiring the serene landscape, and then, at the edge of the forest, perched on a tree, I see it. Look! An eagle! I think it's the same one I saw earlier. I quickly unzip my bag and take out my camera. I turn it on, nervously waiting for it to start responding. The screen is still black. Ah! Stupid me! I take off the lens cap, point the camera in the direction of where I spotted it, and look through the viewfinder. It's gone again. I feel a wave of cold sweat run over my back. I've lost it. I was too slow. You didn't catch it? I turn around. Miko leaning in is looking at me with concern. Seeing him up close for the first time in three years, I realized that I'd forgotten how blue his eyes are. Mm-hmm. Looks like it. It wasn't quick enough. I feel the urge to kick myself in the shin for this. I've seen it twice today, and both times I was too slow. Suddenly, I find myself in a tight embrace of my childhood friend. Slowly, my anger fades away, and I hug him back. He smells very familiar and comforting. Like most Finns, he wasn't always such a physical person. It was my influence, mostly, that changed it. I've always liked keeping my friends close, and I've always found hugging very comforting. So, little by little, I turned him from a typical solitary Finn into the cuddly wolf he is now. Now, I am the first one to push back, though, breaking the hug. I really missed him. Although, how on earth did you want to get a good shot through the window? Oh, I put a polarizing filter on this lens. Just in case, we would witness something interesting during the ride. See? I unscrew the filter from the lens and show it to Miko. And that is where it's going to end for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!